Hey guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's time for another team focused video, and this time, I'm taking a look at the Sydney Swans. The Swans are a team I've always associated with excellence, and for good reason. Since the 2002 season, the Swans have only failed to play finals once, in 2009. That season was also the last time Sydney finished outside the top six. Suffice it to say, they are a side that is used to being in premiership contention year in, year out. Due, presumably, to a desire to stay prominent within a Sydney market more interested in rugby, the Swans have made a concerted effort to avoid ever bottoming out. Their list management strategies have reflected this, regularly seeking ready-made talent to consolidate their list. With regard to staying in the top half of the ladder, Sydney have to be considered the very best in the business. Admittedly, the Swans have been afforded certain advantages, such as the recently removed cost of living allowance which allowed them a slightly expanded salary cap. However, the Swans are one of the best run clubs in the land, and it's their amazing bloods culture and brilliant player development that has allowed them to be a force over the years, rather than those other advantages. Because of this unwillingness to drop down the ladder, the Swans are a club I will observe with interest in the 2019 season. Their end to 2018 was lacklustre to say the least, as they scored just 30 points in their elimination final loss at the hands of the Giants. To me, it is clear that they are a club undergoing a transition from one generation to the next. Some of their better players, such as McVeigh, Grundy and the great Buddy Franklin are all on the wrong side of 30. Additionally, they lost two more experienced players in Dan Hanabry and Gary Rowan to Victoria. On the plus side, they benefit from the fact that they have a nucleus of talented young players already on the list. Isaac Keeney and Callum Mills were more or less slam dunks through their academy picks, but they've also drafted some excellent talents such as Will Hayward and Oliver Florent in particular too, who both look like future guns of the competition. They've also added a Buddy Franklin replacement down the line in Nick Blakey from last year's draft. What the Swans are beginning to be assured on is actual depth to their list between the ageing stars and the bright up-and-comers. One thing the Swans have done exceptionally well throughout my time watching football is recycling discard players from other clubs' list and turning them into good role players. In this offseason, they recruited Ryan Clark and Jackson Thurlow, and we're hoping they can weave their magic again with these two. Other players the Swans have plucked from obscurity and turned into talented role players include Ben Ronk, Tom Papley, and George Hewitt. Given the Swans' track record in this area, I'd be confident in betting they can do the same with Clark and Thurlow. What has also interested me was the fact that while the Swans would have offloaded some salary cap in trading Hanbury and Rowan, they opted to target relatively low budget replacements. This, coupled with the fact that they were reportedly in the market for Andrew Gaff last year, suggests to me that they may be planning strategically to secure a free agent signing in future off seasons. As for 2019, I'm not completely sure what to expect from the Swans. My head is telling me that with their unconvincing finish to last season, they may be set to miss the finals for the first time in a decade. That being said, the Swans have made proving people wrong into an art form, so you can't write them off as a top 6 or even top 4 chance. With players like Franklin, Kennedy and Parker amongst others on the list, you just can't write them off, and for me they remain one of the hardest sides to peg in 2019. Nonetheless, I anticipate that there will be more teething issues as they continue to transition from one generation to the next, and I think they will just miss out on playing finals this year. But what do you think? As always, I welcome your opinions in the comments section. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for our weekly AFL content. Thanks. Bye for now.